Hi there, I'm Ms. Artastic, and in this episode, I'm gonna be talking about how to help your child make art at home. So let's dive in on this episode and let's make some art. All right, number one is to set up an art tub. So what I like to do is I like to design a very specific space for my art supplies to exist. And then whatever is in there has to stay in there. So it's not just like we're gonna go find the crayons and the felts from around the house from different spots. We wanna just have our designated art making tub so that way when we go to do art as part of learning, then we are ready to go. It's always all available, right? So it's going to be easy to access. It's taking away the friction of having to find the things to create art, right? So it's encouraging the art making process. So we're going to go find, we're going to set up an art tub. So what I like to do is get a nice clear Rubbermaid or whatever Rubbermaid you have. Something that has like a lid that has a nice secure snap on because we don't want an accident to happen where, where one day perhaps your art supplies fell over, the lid wasn't on um, well, or it didn't, you know, wasn't secured, or didn't have a lid, and it's all over the place, and now we have to pick up all the bits and pieces out of our, whatever space we have, whatever the carpet or the rug, and it's just a pain. So we rather just avoid all those things by having a nice secure lid on. That's most important um, over everything. <laughs> it doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter if it was like the most expensive bin. It just needs to have a lid that is secure. Uh, just, if it's in the dollar store and it has a nice secure lid, boom, that's perfect. All right. Inside our art tub, we're going to do, be putting in very specific things. At the bottom, the heaviest will be your cardstock paper and construction paper. Cardstock paper is like a little bit thicker than normal paper, so that way it can um, be used with things like watercolor paints and oil pastels. It's not gonna deteriorate or get all crinkly and then kids get frustrated and need a new piece of paper. It's really, really great to use and I love it. Um, and then you get a nice big thick pack for way less than it would cost to get a sketchbook. Um, and it's pretty similar thickness to what you would find in a sketchbook, even thicker at times, right? Depending on what kind of sketchbook paper you have. So I really like getting cardstock. And kids may not keep their art forever, so if it's in a sketchbook, then it's, you know, more permanent. And if it's not in a sketchbook, well, then it could be an experimentation or it could be something that you choose to frame. Next, we're putting in construction paper, obviously, for some color options, right? We want to be creative. On top of that, we're going to get a nice dollar store plastic table covering or tablecloth. We're going to fold that up nice and square. We're going to pop that on top. And then we're going to reuse that one over and over again so that way our working space is nice and tidy. It makes cleanup so easy. Optional, you can always add in like a spray bottle and microfiber cloth if you want to um, just have something convenient in there. I don't know if I would because if it leaks, then, eh. but you might want to have a designated microfiber in there that you're like, okay, this microfiber is good to get yucky <laughs> with art materials, right? It's not like your rest of the one you're going to use around the house. Like this one's going to be for just art stuff only. Um, and that might be a good idea. All right, and then we're gonna put in some containers of art supplies. So what I like to do is I like to get those clear um, food storage containers with the snapping lids, the ones that snap down on the sides or something that snaps on secure. But the ones that snap down on the sides, it means it's not coming off, right? It's extra locked. <laughs> and I'm all about that extra lock when it comes to something that could be a little bit more messy, right? Especially if you're it's inside your house. You want to keep it nice and secure. And so what we're going to do is we're going to get a couple packs of wax crayons, some oil pastels, and um, whatever else, other, um, whatever other mediums you want to use. We're going to dump them out of those cardboard boxes they come in, right? Because we know that once we pull out one crayon out of the cardboard box, it's kind of sometimes hard to get it back in and close the lid, or while you're closing the lid, it's blowing out the bottom all over the place. Or the oil pastel containers don't often have a lid. They just have a lid that just stays on and off, right? So it can easily, it's easy to fall off. It doesn't really stay on. It's not holding anything. And oil pastels are kind of a little bit mo more messy of the mediums. So we don't really want those to be just casually falling all over the house. So per, uh, that's my suggestion is to 
turf the cardboard boxes and dump them in a nice communal uh, food storage container that has nice locking lids and you know it's secure. It's also easy to, sorry, I have a hair on my face, easy to find stuff and put it away in there. And if it breaks, now you have two of those colors because um, oil, oil pastels and wax crayons are good until you can no longer hold them. It doesn't matter if they break, it's fine. <laughs> now you've got two. It actually makes it a little bit easier to hold because I find sometimes they're gonna they're, they're breaking my hands all the time anyways. Like I cannot keep an, a wax crayon these days to stay solid <laughs> for my life dependent on it. Like I cannot. I break them. It's all good. Anyways, so we're going to put those in. Um, we're going to put a pack of felt markers in and of course watercolor paints. Get a watercolor paint set um, and then add that in there. Um, you can also get like a yogurt container um, or something out of the recycling bin. Not a can because that will rust, but like a can. I mean like a container, that jar, wash a jar, wash a yogurt container, whatever that you can use and reuse as your water container, right? You don't need to go buy these things. You can just reuse it and it can be your water container. And a couple paint brushes. You don't need a lot. You only need like two. Unless you have lots of kids, then you might need more than two. Um, but anyways, we only need a couple of everything and then we pop that in on the very top and now we are ready to go in our art tub and you're gonna have it in a special spot in your home or, or closet, wherever, it doesn't matter, wherever you wanna put it and then you know it's gonna live there and that way you could take it out. All the supplies are ready to go so it makes art making really easy and then it goes back to that same spot when you're done. Number two is to pick a space where you're going to make art. It doesn't have to be like a setup studio. It doesn't even have to be a setup drawing table or art making table. It could be a temporary spot. What we're gonna do is we're just going to pick a spot where it's like you're part of your routine to go make art, whether it's the kitchen table or the kitchen counter or even the kitchen floor. You could put your tablecloth on the floor and then get sit on, to, on the floor to create with some clipboards. That's totally fine too. Whatever you have available to you, that is what you can use. And that is totally, totally fine. There is no rules to making art, right? Artists go outside to make art. You make art anywhere, right? So it doesn't really matter. You can make art on a plane. You can make art on a train. <laughs> Legitimately, I've done well, I don't have too many trains down here, but I've done the art on a plane. So you can make art legitimately anywhere. Um, I make art when I go boating. There's no rules. So don't, don't, don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. You can also change up the vibe by playing some like, changing the lighting, maybe put on some lamps or put on some place, you know, jazz music, like cafe jazz playlist or like mindful Zen playlist, whatever you have, and then make it kind of a little ex Experience. And that would be so special too. Maybe you have like a special tea or a drink to have with each other. And I think that would make it really nice and then just like make it really special quality bonding time between everybody. Number three is to get some art books. So you can go to the local library, to the local bookstore, or look online for a variety of different art books to inspire learning. So that could be um, books that are about art, such as Peter Reynolds, um, The Dot, or Ish, um, or Sky Color. Um, you can look at the, so books about the process of art, right? Or books about creativity. You can get books for kids about artists or art history and teach art through that lens. And you can also get books um, about how to make different art projects or how to draw for kids. And there are so many different inspiring things. So if you're, if you're needing a little bit more support, you can find lots of ideas in books. And I highly recommend it. You know, once you have it, then you can look through it. Or if you get from the library, then you return it and get some more. And then you have lots of different ideas. If you're looking for a recommended book list of somewhere to start, um, just to get some ideas going of what to look for, you can check out my recommended book list in the description of this video my friend, and those are all books that I highly recommend that you check out as a great place to start to get inspired or art-spired, if you will. And just so you know, they are Amazon affiliate links. That means I may get a commission should you make a purchase from them, um, just so you are aware. But it's a great place to start in terms of researching what books you would like to take a look at. All right, next is number four is to watch some YouTube tutorials. If you're wanting to learn how to use specific mediums, there are tons of 
art tutorials on YouTube that are put out there by real professional artists. Um, if you want to take a look at artists actually making art, so many of them have YouTube, YouTube channels. And for instance, I have even have my own, um, but that one's geared towards adults where this is my kids, kid friendly, teacher friendly, parent friendly channel, family friendly. Um, so what I'm saying is you can take a look at their channels. You can, uh, type in say how to use oil pastels and they might you might find like a whole video sharing techniques different techniques on and skills on how to use your oil pastels or different techniques on how to use your watercolor paints and i think that's so special and you can learn so much for free from watching youtube videos all right number five is to go outside Going outside is a really great way to just get a lot of creative energy and ideas and jumpstart your art adventure. So if you're really wanting to help your child make art at home, I suggest like, hey, you know what? Let's go outside today. Let's change things up. We're going to make it special. We're going to go outside today and we're going to find a place outside to go and to draw and make art. You can go out on your patio or balcony, out on a park, bench, um, go on a trail walk, just sit outside at a park on the grass with a picnic blanket, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. Just go outside, whatever that looks like, um, a rooftop patio, I don't know. And you can take something to draw on and something to draw with, and then they can either choose to draw something they see outside or just draw something from their imagination. I often find when I'm outside, I get so many more ideas because I'm getting excited. My uh, creative juices are now flowing. I'm like, wow, I feel great. The sun's on my face. I have fresh air. And then I'm just like so relaxed that the ideas just come to me and I can draw from my imagination. Sometimes I draw what I see in front of me. Um, I, if I go to the lake, I always bring my sketchbook and my what little you know, pocket-sized watercolor paint sets. Yes, they do exist. You get little travel size. They're so perfect. I open that up and I just do some quick sketching or sketching with pencil. And I just, have, I just get a small sketchbook to take with me. And then I get so many ideas that way. And it really sparks a lot of creativity. So I highly suggest going outside and just making it carefree and relaxed. And you can just be very mindful. Uh, it's a mindful experience where you're not worrying about the past because the past has already happened. You're not worrying about the future because it hasn't happened yet. You just get to live in the moment together and spend some quality time. You're outside, you're away from the tech, and it's beautiful and wonderful. All right. Um, number six is to get some art lessons. So if you want to help your child make art, you can always in, um, supplement with some art lessons as well. So you can go find some local art lessons at an art studio or see if a community center offers anything, or if there's nothing available in your area or you're looking for something that has a little bit more flexibility because you already have a busy schedule and you're already enrolled in a bunch of after school programs or you don't have a lot of time, then you can always check out my online streaming art lesson program. It is a membership called Artastic Kids Online Streaming Lessons where I have a library of, of hundreds of different art lessons to choose from that are in a variety of different levels levels so kids can pick a just right level for them. So there's some that are easier, more moderate, and a little bit more challenging. So they can go back and forth and either and choose what is easiest for them. There are and there's also videos at different lengths. You can have these quick short art projects and a little bit longer ones to allow for variety. As well, there's built-in variety in terms of topics that I, and themes that I explore. So anything from elements of art to hobbies and seasons to plants and animals to landscapes, um, underwater and things that go, things that go, and so much more. It's all included in the Artastic Kids Online Streaming Art Lesson Program, and. The great thing is that to keep things fresh and current, because I know kids are like, all right, that's boring. I've done that one before. There's nothing new. I add five new art lessons every single month to ensure that there are always there's always something new and exciting for them to explore and check out and create every single month in addition to all the other previously released art lessons. So it's always ever growing and you can check it out by 
scanning the QR code on this screen or hitting the link, hitting the link, clicking the link in the description of the video where you can search Artastic Kids on Google. But essentially you can go to artastickids.com and click the membership button and check out the online streaming art lesson program. It's the most affordable art lessons on the web and you can play my art lessons anywhere, anytime, unlimited as long as you retain your membership. So that means you can make one a month or you can do a hundred a month. It doesn't matter. It's the same cost and you have one membership for your entire household. That means you, unlike going to swimming lessons where you have to pay for each individual kid um, or whatever other program there is, even for art lessons elsewhere in our studio, you have one membership and that's good for your entire household and you cannot say that about much, can you? So if you want to check it out again, Artastic Kids online streaming art lessons membership is the place to go to really allow for your child to have to learn how to use the art making mediums such as wax, wax crayons and oil pastels and watercolor paints um, using their construction paper and understanding how it all works together um, and also I will help provide the ideas so, and, and help them level up their art making skills. So that's it for this episode. My question for you today is this, and I would love to hear your answers in the comments of this video. What struggle are you encountering when it comes to helping your child make art? Please let me know what struggle are you encountering when it helps, when it comes to helping your child make art. Let me know in the comments of this video and I will personally reply. There is nobody else that runs Miserastic except for me, so you know that I'm always the one to respond to you. And your video to watch next is how to teach the elements of art at home. And you can watch that video by clicking the link above or in the description of that video, of this video. And then please make sure you like this video and subscribe subscribe to the channel. It really helps me grow this channel and get to my goal of 10,000, then 100,000 subscribers. That is my big goal. And it doesn't happen unless I have my friends like you subscribe to the channel as well. It really helps Google, I'm sorry, helps, well, it helps Google because Google owns YouTube, but it helps YouTube also share out this video to other people when people comment and they share and they like my video. Um, so I would really appreciate if you could just give me a like and subscribe. It would really help me out and it helps me continue to make these videos for you. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next episode.